Hey, good, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? Hey, this is Gregory Wiles coming live to you from Houston, Texas, with this inspirational morning talk. For first time listeners, I, I'm on at 8.45 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.45 a.m. That's central time. That's our time here in Houston. And you can calculate which time zone you are in. But today I'm going to stay indoors. I'm still recovering from what turned out to be a sinus infection. So I'm still recovering from that and it's a little cold out there, but I'm an outdoor person, but I just have to apply some wisdom, a part of what I'm gonna talk about today and stay indoors till I can feel um, much better and overcome fully um, before I can expose myself if, uh, um, <clears throat> if I can avoid it to the, um, the weather outside, right? But today what we're gonna talk about I'm going to be talking about a few little laws today, but the one I'm going to, I'm going to focus on is, um, and then show how this applies to other laws and how we can use these laws in our lives. Because lots of time we quote these scriptures and, you know, it's just a scripture to most people. It's a nice, wise saying, but if we don't apply it to our lives, that's where the wisdom comes in when we apply these things to our lives, right? So that's why I like to do. So we can look at one primarily here, the law of association. We talked about it before, but we can kind of drill down in it and see how it blends with other things, how we can, um, how all these um, laws can take course in our lives at different time, right? The one I want to focus on is the law of association. Um, <clears throat> uh, this kind of scared me here for a little bit. I don't know who's using my mother's name or who have the same name as my mother, but it said Doreen Wilds is watching. And Doreen Wilds, okay. Good morning, Doreen Wilds, whoever's watching under that name. Miss Alan Dwayne, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? Yes, yeah, so the law we're going to take in talking about first is the law of association. We spoke about it before, but it's nice to get back into it. And, um, we're going to um, expand on it a little bit, right? So the law of association is Proverbs 13, 20. 13, 20. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. That's the NLT translation, right? It says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. So this law is saying, in a nutshell, if you hang out with wise people, it's a law, a spiritual law that you don't know. It's going to rub off on you. And if you hang out with people who are going somewhere, doing something, that's why they just tell you if you want to become an accountant, if you want to become a lawyer, hang out with those people. Even before you get into that position, hang out with those people. Because the stuff they're talking, the stuff they're doing, the way they think, all of that's going to rub off of, on you. And that's the skills and the knowledge that you need to, to further yourself in what you want to do, right? And in the negative, if you hang out with people who are cursing and stealing and fighting and, and sleeping around and drinking and all of that kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff that's going to rub off on you all. So these are spiritual laws. These are the laws that govern life. So you could say, I don't believe it or not, and I don't think I can hang out with these people and nothing going around. I'm not going to... You remember the story growing up, uh, well, um, they used to teach us in school, where this parrot was hanging out with the crows. The crows or the vultures who always go into the farm, the fields, the farmer's fields and eat up the crop. And the parrot was hanging out with them. You know, I'm a parrot, but I just hang out with And then the farmer shot into the big group of crows and it hit the parrot. And the parrot was like, man, it's a farmer. I'm a parrot. I'm not a crow. Why you shoot me? I don't eat your crops. And the farmer told him, if you weren't with the crows be found, you would all be, you would be safe and sound. So the farmer telling him, if you weren't hanging out with the crows, my bullet could have never hit you. My bullet would have never hit you if you didn't hang out with the crows. You're a pirate, hang out with pirates. And you would have been safe from my bullet. Okay, you'd be nowhere near my crops. So my bullet would not have hit you, right? So in a nutshell, so I'm trying to um, tell people because this, I prompted this. I know my, um, my little cousin, um, niece, wife, niece, my niece, she got into a Texas A&M University here and they went on the college trip yesterday. And I know a lot of times kids 
go into colleges and they hang out with the wrong crowd. Some of them hang out with the wrong crowd and then they come home after semester, they're doing things that you're not, you know, know that, you know, use. This is not this person, right? They pick up some habits, whether it's drinking, whether it's going to partying all the time, whether it's cursing, whether it's doing drugs, whether it's why you're like, how, you know, I mean, she grew up in a good household, but it's, if you look back at it, it's the company with he or she's hanging out with at, on, on campus, right? And then the flip side of that, they come back with some good traits, you know what I mean? And you're like, wow, this person is so wise, they're doing that, you know? And then, it's the, it's the company we're hanging out with. It's spiritual laws, and it's going to run its course whether you believe it or not. That's why some of the movies, when some of those guys got to go undercover, and they say they're in too deep, they got to go undercover into some, you know, criminal organization or some drug organization, pretend to be one of them so they can learn what's going on, so they can bring it down. Sometimes them guys go in too deep, and it's hard for them to come back on the other side got to spend so much of times with the bad guy, they automatically start to think and start to like a bad guy. So so the organization got to find out of work for them when they go on certain big cases and they stay too long. Sometime before they get to the stage, they got to pull them out. If they don't get the information they need before a certain time, they got to pull them out because this law is going to come into effect, guys. This is serious, right? So let's look at a little story here, and then we can show how these are the laws now. Because we talk about the other law before, and we kind of go into a little depth into it. And that's Proverbs 22, 6, saying, train up your child on the right path. Some say, train up your child in the way they should go. It depends on which translation you're looking at. Train up your child in the way they should go, and when they get older, they should not depart from it, right? The NLT, break it down a little simpler. It's a train up your child on the right path, and when they're older, they will not leave it, right? So... If you train up your child in the right path, right? And we're trying to show all these laws come into play. You train up your child in the right path. You bring them up in a, in, a, um, in, a, in a spiritual background that we talk about when God said, that's why God tell the Israelites, repeat this stuff to your children at bedtime, in the car, when y'all having dinner. Every day, tell them to repeat this stuff to them because he wants you to train them up with this background, right? So let's say now you train up your child in this background here. You send them to college <clears throat> and they go and they meet up with a round set of people and they drift off track and they're drinking, they're smoking, they're doing all of these things that you didn't really teach them to do. You're worried, you're upset, you're mad with them, right? But I'm going to tell you now... They're going to drift off and they're going to get into the trouble, right? As the law say here in Proverbs 13, 20, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get into trouble. They're going to get into the trouble that they can get into because of their behavior. But if you, are tra if you train them up, right, and you give them that foundation, right, that right foundation, the spiritual foundation, the godly foundation, if you train them up, you got hope now that the, this other law is going to take effect. But here with this other law says, right? Proverbs 22, 6, direct your children or train up your child in the way they should go. And when they're older, they shall not depart from it. So the end of that child who was trained up in the right way and then drift off and start doing around things. That's why sometimes you hear some people become these staunch Christians and become preachers in prison. Right, you hear it become big time preachers. Some of these preachers out here today, the testimony is they found God in prison. But I sure if you ask a lot of them, a big chunk of them had this training, the mother, father had bring them up with with a, 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 a Christian background, but then somewhere along the line they get a lot get associated with the wrong set of people. I get yourself in trouble, end up in prison. But what the law say? What the law say? If you direct them in the right path, you train them up in the way they should go. When they get older, they should not depart from it. So in prison now, when you get in all this trouble, what you think he's going to turn back to? This law now going to take back effect. That law of association done do its job and got him into the trouble that it's promised it's going to do if you line up with the wrong set of people. But now, this law of train up your child in the right way. Now we're going to take back effect. This last when they get older, they're not depart from it. So when he's sitting in prison now, all this trouble, he look back at his life and say, man, this is not me. You know, I come up in a better home. I got better training than this. This is not me. 
then some um, prison ministry coming, or he find the Bible and he just got a lot of faith, or the prison ministry start going to the session and say, you know what? All of this come right back into effect. This other law train up your child come right back. But let's say the next child who did not have this foundation, only foundation they had is no proper foundation in Christ. The foundation was different. They learned to do other things. Their parents bring them up doing other things. Let's say it's lying, cheating, stealing. When you get into trouble, this is what you do to get out of it. In prison or in wherever they are, it's a little harder for them. It's a little harder. A lot of them, it happened. But the percentages of that happening is rare that they can found Christ and become, you know, it's rarer than the child who was trained up in this way. It's easier because this law is going to take back the effect when they get older, they should not depart from it. But because the law association, they don't get into trouble for having out to the wrong crowd. But this law is going to take effect back in the latter part of the life now. And that's how these, all this stuff work hand in hand, guys. That's why we got to know these things. So if you train them up, even if they drift off path, you got hope that this law is going to take back effect on them when they get older they can come right back to the training that you give to them but they can give you some headache in the process in the middle there if the drift off part then you some headache and you keep praying but it's not gonna come right back that's why it's important for the foundation so let's look here at um a little um scripture here and see a little passage of how these men was deemed bold and confident and was the reason for it where this law of association was at play. I can go back a little bit to give you a little backstory. This is Peter and John. They went in Jerusalem. You know, they was witnesses of Jesus Christ and they were just sounding so intelligent, so much wisdom and they was just converting people. People was believing them, but the leaders got upset with them. This portion here, but they bring them up for charges for because they actually healed a, be a lame beggar. So they was just looking for anything saying you're healing on the Sabbath and you're doing this and you're supposed to. They really are just to look at the miracles. Instead of looking at the miracles, the great things with these guys doing, they just want to arrest them, right? And these guys, they wasn't ever shy to tell them, hey, uh, so let me read this here quickly. So Peter and John come before the Sanhedrin. What's the Sanhedrin? That was that group of men who had the authority, like the court back in those days. To make all these decisions, whether to jail you, not to jail you, they make decisions. They like the authority figure, the court in the in the um, in the areas, right? They were the Sanhedrin. There was a court. You go to them, they can make rulings. So the Peter and John to bring him up after he healed this beggar. They're trying to get something to charge him on, right? Charge them on. So Peter and John before the Sanhedrin. This is Acts four. I read a little bit from Acts four because I want to bring out this law of association here. That's my goal in Acts 4, right? So he said, the priests and the captain of the temple guards and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus is the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of of the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. So these men just impressed with the things that Peter and John are saying, right? And they are, they didn't just get converted, just in awe, oh, just want to follow these guys, right? The, the leaders didn't like that because they're taking the party away from them. They should be running after the leaders like that and not these men, right? The next day, the rulers, the, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem, Ananias, the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name do you do this? Last thing, what, what power are you coming under? What name are you using that you could be, you know, doing these things, healing people, selling this intelligent, captivating these people? Right? So the question is, what power? So here are them guys responding. This will get them used to get them upset. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for the act of kindness, they kind of heal a beggar who was lame for like 41 years or something like that. Don't quote me. It's somewhere like that. All his life. And they heal this man. Before you look at this as a good thing, they look at this as a bad thing to find charges on them, right? 
If we are being called to account today for the act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how, we, how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified. That's what those guys keep telling them all the time. They keep getting upset. Y'all killed this great man. All this power that we got is because of him. And y'all had him around your midst. And instead you learn from him and get the same power that we have. Y'all kill him. So that's what they was getting really upset about. That's why you keep throwing the back. Them guys keep throwing the back in the faces all the time, right? So he said, it is by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom raised, whom God raised from the dead. And this man stands before you healed in Jesus' name. He said, this man stand before you heal is because of Jesus' name, right? That's all you. But let me go on. The part I want to get to to show you these guys' confidence and boldness. Just imagine these guys are in front of the court. And knowing these men want to throw them in jail, but these guys didn't back him down. They were so bold and they was confident. They were sticking to what they're saying. I don't care what decisions y'all make with us, but we, this is what we, we standing on, right? But let's see where to get the confidence and the boldness from. That's why I'm trying to go with this. That's why I gave this backstory. I want to show you why. Remember, we're talking about the law of association. So here all the elders then respond though. So they said, the stone the builders reject, which become the, the cornerstone, the Jesus, right? So now here with the elders, this is the part I want to get to. Salvation is found in, the, in, in no one else, for there is no other name on the heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So them guys saying here, the elders then respond now. And this can bring up the point of association. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were, they were unschooled. Okay, remember a lot of these guys were just fishermen in the villages, right? They didn't add all these big education um, with these rabbis and priests and all them have. These guys were just regular fishermen that was disciple of Jesus. So here were they on admission. When they saw the courage, okay, remember these guys in front of the court and they're not backing down from there. And they're like, who is these guys? When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, this is their own, their own, own language, unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could not, since they could see the men who had been healed standing there with them, they were nothing they could see. So here they said, these are ordinary, unschooled, ordinary men. I know these guys was just fishermen, but how they get this authority, how they get this power, this confidence to be standing up to us like this and, and saying some things that we cannot get a, a little opening to, to, to charge them. And they got all these people captivated with the wisdom. But they remember, oh, these men were hanging out with Jesus. Law association, unschooled, ordinary men, just fishermen. But because they was hanging out with Jesus, that knowledge and everything transferred to them. Spiritual laws. Spiritual laws. So that's what the scripture is saying here. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. That if a fool saying is a silly or stupid person, who lacks judgment or sense. That's what the dictionary definition is a fool. You lack judgment or sense. You just ain't got much judgment. So the last thing, if you hang out with wise men, who these guys was hanging out with? They were hanging out with Jesus. So they get this wiseness, this knowledge, this confidence, this boldness. But these men have to realize, ah, oh, I know these is ordinary unschooled men. They ain't got this education that I have. But because it was hanging out with Jesus... That's the secret right there. That's how they become so wise. And that's what I want to get to too. Knowledge and all that when you go to school and get all the knowledge is not wisdom. Here, a next little scripture. I'm trying try to throw in a couple of laws and showing how all these stuff work together because this is important for us to understand. Here we're now, here, 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 next little law here that we, we can't overlook and see where wisdom comes from. Proverbs 9.10 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
So if you want knowledge, knowledge only comes from God's word. Because all of these laws here, a person could go to school and got 10 degrees, and a person understand these laws, these spiritual laws that govern life, they're going to be more successful, and they're going to sound more intelligent more than you with 10 degrees. Because you got a lot of knowledge in certain specific areas. But this person understand life because they got all these laws that govern life. So when they get up to talk and speak and they can make predictions and bold predictions because of these spiritual laws, they'll sound more intelligent, they'll captivate more people and, and, and get a lot more results and be a lot more successful because they understand life, which is these laws. But here it comes from, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. So when you fear the Lord and reverent the Lord, you reverent the fear, not mean a trembling, scary fear. It's reference of the Lord, the respect. So if you respect the Lord now, you can go study his word, right? So the Buddha said, a knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You can always see wisdom, knowledge, understanding going together. Because wisdom is the end result of the knowledge and understanding. You can understand this thing, you have the knowledge about it, you understand how it works. But not until you apply it. That's where wisdom comes in, the application of knowledge. So you see Peter and John here. When they were sung is so wise, you see all these scriptures come into play. Who did they fear? Who they was referencing? They feared the Lord. They had the respect for Jesus and he's the son of God and the belief in him. So, they said that's the beginning of the wisdom. Now, to sit with Jesus, to soak up all the knowledge, to learn all these things, to get the Holy Spirit now. And that's where the whole, the wisdom, all the wisdom and the boldness, they could go out there and talk to the men who got the authority to lock them up, but they was not scared because they know what they know and they're confident with what they know. They was hanging out with Jesus and they said, look, this is it. I um, just want to blend all these things in, guys, how all these law works, right? And there's a lot to kind of throw in there, but I was taking each one of these laws separately and I want to kind of show them how they all apply to life because it's nice for us to quote these scriptures and we don't have an understanding how they really work in everyday life with us. And that's where the wisdom come, applying these stuff to our everyday life. That's wisdom right there, right? I'll stop there, but um, we can go on and take some more and kind of blend them and see how they all work. But the principal one we'll start off with today is Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. And we're saying even if that catch you, but if you had start out your children in Proverbs 22, 6, with direct your children on the right path, when they get older, they will not, Leave the path, or you said train up your child the way they should go. And when they get older, they should not depart from it. That's why it's important for you to know these things. So if you train them up, they're gonna the law of association could catch them, they can slip off track, but then they can come right back to the training you give them. And the end end result of the life is gonna be great. They can still find back Jesus and everything, even though they slip off path for years, they might be doing wrong. But this law, you could guarantee if you bring them up with this Christian foundation. Before the eyes close, they will come back to it. That's a law. It's not my word. This is a law. And it's going to work if you believe it or not. All right, guys. I'm going to leave that there because I can keep going on. But have a great, great, um, was it Friday? And we'll talk again on Monday. Goodbye. Okay,